G'day everyone. Uh, welcome to Speaker Chats. Today I'm, I'm joined with uh, a safety speaker and also a good mate of mine, Greg Smith, otherwise known as Smitty. How are you, Greg? Yeah, good, Woody. How are you, mate? Yeah, not bad. I'm uh, coping with, uh, with lockdown phase two. So here we go yeah. again. Yeah, it's pretty tough, isn't it? Yeah. Mate, I, I want to start off by asking you uh, how long you've been sharing your little story at workplaces. Yeah, so I think, mate, um, I think you got me on board probably four, three or four years ago now, I reckon yeah. I probably started. Yeah, um, that sounds about right. Yeah, and then, um, yeah, so, I mean, I don't, I don't do obviously as many as you and probably some of the other guys do just because mm. of my other work. But yeah, of course. Um, yeah, I try and get to do as many as I can. Yeah. So can you just uh, explain to people that are listening, Smitty, um, what is your other role, your other job? Yeah, so like you, mate, I got into sport um, pretty quickly after I had my accident. Um, mm -hmm. And then and I had a wheelchair racing career and then a wheelchair rugby career. Yep. But I'd come from a um, physical training sort of background within the army and, and stuff like that. Mm. Um, and yeah, so I, after my career was over I, and my sporting career, I mean, um, I got asked to become our physical training um, coordinator and strength and conditioning coach for the wheelchair rugby team. So that's the Australian wheelchair rugby team. So that's yep. my sort okay. of main gig, mate. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and uh, the Paralympics and the Olympics have been postponed this year, Greg. So hopefully, uh, you know, things will settle down enough that uh, the boys can get out there and, and do their stuff next year sometime. So fingers, yeah. crossed, fingers crossed for that. Absolutely. So, Greg, just uh, for, you know, we're only seeing a head and shoulders shot of you at the moment. Can you just explain the, uh, the extent of, of your injury? And uh, a little bit about how it affects you on a day to day basis. Yeah, so my injury is um, classified as an, an incomplete quadriplegia. So I need to use a wheelchair all the time yep. for my mobility. Um, but that quadriplegia means that I had an injury into in the lower part of my neck. Which um, yeah, so I had a fracture and then a and a and then a spinal cord dislocation. So yep. essentially, the cord running through there just got shifted um, mm -hmm. and got pinched, um, and enough sort of nerve damage to then affect yeah my body. So I've got no function from probably yeah my sort of mid chest um, level down yep. through my legs and everything. I've got some. Um, I got most of my sensation in varying degrees, mm. um, which I'm pretty lucky to have. Like yeah. not a lot of people with a spinal cord injury mm. end up um, keeping their sensation, which is yeah. can obviously be handy at times just to you know keep moving around so that you don't get pressure sores and things like that. Yeah, um, And then yeah. yeah, and so then that and it also affects my hands, mate. So I don't have um, full function in my hands either. Yeah. Yep. Now, here's a, a strange question, Smitty, and I, I know you've probably been asked this before. Will it ever get any better? <laughs> no, it won't, unfortunately. And if anything, it's probably, as you get older, it's actually probably on a decrease. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah so I, I think that's one of, one of the things that I, I think, uh, you know, as we, as we all get older, things get harder for everybody. You know, yeah, for, absolutely. For able-bodied people. But for anyone like yourself and like me with a spinal cord injury, you know, things just are going to get that little bit more challenging and, and harder for us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. So um, this is a, a little bit of a, a sensitive question, but um, if, if you could pick one thing that your injury uh, stops you from doing that it, you, you used to be able to do before your injury, uh, what would it be, mate? Do you have a... a, a I mean, I know you're a, a, a pretty sporty sort of person or a, 
an activity yeah. that you used to really enjoy? Is there, is there anything that you really wish you could still do? Yeah, for sure, mate. I think, like, I probably, it, like, it, in an individual um, sense, like, I, I probably missed the whole mountain bike thing. Like, I was, yeah, yeah. you know, I was riding yep. pushies bikes, but they'll be MX bikes and, yes. you know, just road bikes and stuff like that. And, yeah. and the mountain bike thing sort of came along just after my injury. Um, yeah. And there, and look, I would love to, to be able to, you know, chuck on some bloody shorts and shoes and, yeah. and a t-shirt and then just jump on a mountain bike. And be, yeah. like, I live in Bunanyong in Victoria, which is a fairly, uh, it's like it's bush. So there's a lot of mountain bike sort of trails and fire trails yeah. and things like that around that I'd love Perfect. to be able to just get out there and, and just yeah really enjoy myself. And yeah, I, I, then, sorry, mate. I, I sort of, I sort of tease myself these days because occasionally I've got a, a hand cycle and when I do go into the, the bike shop to get a, I don't know, a tire or a tube or something, I see all these absolutely yeah. beautiful mountain bikes with, you know, long travel yeah. suspension, hydraulic disc brakes, and I go, oh, shit, I yeah. wish. Yeah, I, I and mean, I'm exactly the same, mate. I've got a, an off-road hand cycle. Yep. Uh, and I do what I can, obviously. Yeah. But I think the thing I miss about that, mate, is be, because... Like you can't say you go for a ride in your able bo- and your able body, you can go and ride really wherever you like. Because if you park your car and you jump on your bike and away you go, if something goes wrong, mm. you pick it up and yeah. you walk home. You walk home. But for us, you're really limited to where you can go because if something does go wrong, then someone's got to be able to get to you. And, yeah. and a lot of the time that means, you know, they might have to drive to where you are, like yeah. like I'd always tell my wife where I'm going yep. and I always sort of make it as accessible as I can in terms of if something goes wrong, then yeah. she's got to be able to get to me. She's got to be able to get I'm my wheelchair to, to me yeah. and then I've got to be able to get out of that spot. Yeah. And yeah. so there's a lot to think about. Yeah. But then right, and the other side of that question, mate, too, is that, you know, with three, I've got three young boys. So, and they're sort of all getting to the age where they're, you know, they're pretty adventurous and want to do lots of different things and, and you, you, I just can't do them because of the wheelchair. So yeah. that's probably the biggest thing at the moment is I just miss being able to do a lot of the things that the boys yeah. want yeah, to do. Yeah, I can relate to that, mate. As you know, I've got two boys that are a bit older now yeah. and uh, some yeah. of the things that, you know, I think, you know, for, for you and I, there's, there's nothing more frustrating than for your kids to ask you or expect you to be able to do something with them and you just physically can't yeah. do it. It's a, it's a real mental kick in the... It kick. is, yeah. And it doesn't it matter how long, how long we've been in a wheelchair, no. those sorts of things don't get any easier. No, you, no. You, you don't, you don't. Just, just, going back to, just going back to you sharing your story uh, with others at, at workplaces, Spitty. Um, what do you think people take out of listening to your story and listening to someone, someone like me or someone like you when we share our story at a workplace? Yeah, look, man, I hope it's probably the fact that they get a real visual um, impression of what, what can go wrong rather yeah. than just probably have... Um, look, I think a, a safety officer or a safety manager is probably still something that a business obviously needs and and can talk about the, the risks involved um, and you know, the things that can happen. And you can sit there and think, oh yeah, okay, so you know, if I hurt my spine, I hurt my spine and yeah. or you know, chop a finger off, I chop my finger off, or whatever, you know, mm. get on with life and stuff like that. But until someone comes in and is actually sitting down or standing there in front of you with um, you know, the actual thing that could possibly be. I just don't think people probably get the full full reality of it until yeah. it's whacking you in the face, so to speak. Yeah. I, I agree, Smitty, and I think that's part of why I enjoy doing what we do is, you know, just giving people that real and, and visible and tangible reason for some of the things that their manager or their safety officer asks them to do, you know, because yeah. if, they can, if they can stop someone from getting hurt and going through what, what we sort of deal with on a, a day-to-day basis... It's uh, it's got to be worth it. 
Yeah, I think so, mate, for sure. Mm. Mm. Um, just on this one, have you, have you had any interesting questions when you've uh, been out sharing your story, mate? Um, I, off the top of my head, I can't sort of think of it any yeah. right now, other than, you know, yeah, there are sort of probably times, like you've said, you know, where someone might go, oh, hell on until you, you're back up on your feet, mate. Yeah, sort of thing, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, one yeah. of the, the, the reason I ask you that question, Smitty, is one of the questions I've had a, a couple of times now, and, and it amazes me that people would ask me this is, they say, mate, you, your legs don't work. So have you ever thought about getting them chopped off? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, my, my, my normal answer to that, mate, is, oh, look, I, I, I haven't thought about getting them chopped off. But if I did, you know, I'd be pretty pissed off if they came up with a cure for spinal cord injury. <laughs> That's right, yeah. And, then, and I, all I can think of are the other complications that come with having no legs. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, as if as if you haven't got enough problems, you know. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well just just going back to the, the, the injury and when it happened, mate. Apart from yourself, uh, at the time, um, I know we were both sprightly young fellas when uh, when we both got hurt. Who who do you think was the most impacted uh when when you had your accident? Oh look, yeah, my, there's no doubt about it. Mate, that yeah, my family, um, and you know, my mother, um, in particular, like yeah. I, yeah. I was living with a single mum at the time, yep. um, and yeah, the impact on her must have been incredible. I think mm. when I think about you know the stuff yeah. that she had to see her, you know, her teenage son try and deal with and go through, and uh, you know, I was was pretty depressed at the time, yep. you know, and I was. You know, talking about not wanting to live any longer, yeah. and yeah. you know, not just the fact that you know, not only did I not know what you know my life had in front of me, she was probably having all the same sort of thoughts, and I'm yeah. you know, having conversations with her like that. Yeah. She's then trying to plan my life after. You know, what do I do? Do I does he end up in a home? Do I have to you know, make the house modified? Yeah. What does this mean for my job and my future going forward? You know, do I have to give up to be his, become his carer and things like mm. that? So it must have been horrible, yeah. Right. And, and and then my younger brother too. You know, he was sort of he was just going through the last year of, of high school, and yep. you know, when when he probably needed a lot of help with that. Yeah, with all, that. The all the focus was yeah, on. Yeah, that's right. It all became about me, and so he's probably suffered a lot. Um, you know, I'm sure through that as well, just, just yeah. missing out on things back then. And, yeah. yeah. And I think having spoken and, and, you know, mixed with other people that have had injuries over the years, Smitty, um, that's, that's a pretty common thing in that, you know, we were the ones that were dealing with the injury. You know, we were going through hospital rehab and trying to get our lives back on track again. Whereas, you know, people like your mum, my mum and dad, you know, they were all sitting at home, um, absolutely worried, sick about how we were yeah. going to cope. Yeah. So yeah. in a lot of ways, it affects the people around us as much or even more than the person that, that gets hurt. And uh, just, just quickly, since you've started sharing your story at workplaces, have you, have you had anyone sort of really come up to you and say, look, it's not until I heard your story that I'm really going to think about, you know, some of the things that I do. Is it? Do you believe that, you know, by sharing our stories, it does it just change some people's views on on getting hurt? Yeah, absolutely. And and I think oh, I could tell you now every every presentation that I I've done um, in these in the years that I've worked worked with you, mate, and for you is there would have been someone at least one person and mm. more times than not half a dozen will have come to me at the end of the presentation and told me you know a time that they'd you know driven their car or, or tried yeah. to go to work when they're under the effects of fatigue yep. um, or done other something other you know something else really reckless yeah and had never really considered anything that would go on wrong until 
they'd seen me and then, you know, yeah. you can see them wiping the sweat off their brow yeah. that they've yeah. almost, you know, they've escaped yeah. with their brow. Yeah, they have got away with it. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's the beauty of what we do, mate, is it, it does make people realise just how lucky they might have been. Yeah, yeah. So. And, then, and look, and, you know, I can see some... Some people get quite emotional too sometimes because yeah. it's a fairly it's a fairly raw message, yeah. mm -hmm. and I feel you know I feel sorry for that. But in the same same breath, it's obviously having an effect on them. Yes, it's going yeah. to make them be really conscious yeah. moving forward with their lives in the workplace and then and even away from their workplace. Mm. And I, I think it makes them think about how they'd cope if they were in our situation. I mean, they, you know, they see us sitting up there telling our story and talking about um, not just the bad things, but some of the, you know, some of the, the ways that our accidents have changed our lives. Yeah. And, it, it, you know, a lot of people can sit there and think, oh, I wonder how I'd cope if I was in that same situation. Now, I know, I know we've had a bit of a chat about this off air, Smitty, but um, how's uh, the last few months been for you and your family and also for, you know, for your, the people that you work with, the, your, your teammates? Yeah, look, it's, really, it's been a real challenge, that's for sure, mate, like it has been for everybody else. I mean, mm. I've, I've been really lucky in one respect that work has continued. I mean, I've had to change the way that I've, I've done it. Um, mm -hmm. I obviously haven't been, you know, able to do any stuff with you, but yeah. our athletes are still training. Like you said, you know, the Paralympics have, have been postponed so we're still doing stuff but it's been all remote online training yeah. sessions um and a lot of that's been not only just to keep athletes you know in physical condition but also you know that the mental side of it as well because if you just said oh you know well okay we're going to take the rest of the year off and we'll start again when we know what we're doing yeah. i could just see you know yeah. it'd, it'd just be chaotic for our athletes and their mental Never. You have a lot of fat wheelchair rugby players, yeah, mate. <laughs> I sure would, yeah. And then, you know, on the kids, I guess the hardest part for the kids was when we had the remote learning. And, and to, well, not only for the bloody kids. And the adults, the yeah. The bloody parents. <laughs> now, look, that's good, mate. I think we've covered just about everything. But um, I just do want to ask you, if, if anyone watches this and has got any questions for you, are uh, you happy for me to pass on your details and they can ask you ask you a question yeah absolutely mate no problem yeah. at all cool well uh look hopefully uh in a, a few months or maybe early next year mate we'll be back out there sharing our stories and you'll be uh you'll be back in the swing of things with the boys and uh good luck with it all thanks mate look forward to it thanks for your time